I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brett, will you lead us in the invocation? Let's pray. Father, we are here tonight to do the business of the school district in a time that is challenging at best. So please be with our Board of Education, administration, teachers, support staff, and parents as we all make decisions affecting the future of our children. Thank you for the caring people of Ponca City. Please help our elected officials as they too have difficulty in making crucial decisions affecting all of us in this state and in our country. Give them the wisdom to do the right thing for us and for our students. Be with our men and women of the armed forces as they fight to protect us here and abroad. We are proud of them. Please, we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. You didn't pray about the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I might <say. laughs> First order of business is 2.1 public comment. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to make a comment? If not, we'll move right along. 3.0 superintendent's report. He'll talk about both the annual student college remediation report and the state testing. One of the uh, requirements we have each year, and I think last year was the first year we had that, maybe two years ago, is we're to report to the board uh, what our remediation rates are at state institutions. Uh, we only have this information for state institutions because this comes from the Oklahoma State Board of Regents. Uh, they report remediation numbers in four areas, uh, students in science, English, math, and reading. Basically, those are the four divisions on the ACT test. The re remediation rates that uh, we typically talk about are remediation in English and remediation in math. Uh, part of that is because other two numbers are so low, they generally don't, you just don't talk about them. Just to give you an example, uh, our remediation numbers in science are 2.6% uh, of our students that are attending a four-year institution. In reading, it's 6.4%. Uh, what I don't know is how they determine that for science and reading. Um, I know what they do for English and what they do for math. Uh, I've never, until we got this report two years ago, I didn't even know they, they required students to be remediated in science and reading, so I don't know how they, how they pick that. Uh, our remediation numbers for length for, for English are 7.7%, which would be six students. And for math is 19.2%, which is 15 students. Math is the one that everybody, if you look at, I've got the list for every high school in the state of Oklahoma, math is highest for everybody. And again, that's typically the students. I don't remember now what the AC, Barbara, do you remember what the cut score is for the ACT? Is Barbara Cusick still out there? Yes. What, is that, what do they have to, what's the math score they have to take remedial class? Uh, do you remember? It was 18. An 18, 19. 19 subsection on the math test. Remember, all these remediation rates are set by the colleges. Uh, they, uh, or the cut scores, they can do, there's no state requirement. Uh, each institution can set its own remediation numbers. Um, and uh, so the overall remediation rate for Ponca City for the class of 2012 is 23.1% unduplicated numbers. So that means that a student that maybe is re being remediated in math is not being remediated in English. So they take all those kids that are not the same, not, not being remediated in more than one course, add those all up together and come up with a remediation rate. So how do we compare? That's what everybody wants to know. Uh, if you would like a copy of this document uh, that would show all the 400 and some odd high schools in the state of Oklahoma, I'm sure that Betty would be more than happy to email you a copy of that. Um, some numbers uh, for Sepulpa. I'm just going to read you the unre unduplicated <coughs> remediation rate, okay? Uh, for Sepulpa, it's 43% of their, of their students that are attending college. Stillwater is 11.3%, Bixby 34.1%, <coughs> Sand Springs 42.7%, Broken Era 38.9%, Union 42.8%, Jinx 28.5%, uh, 
uh, Bartlesville 20.3. And again, our number was 23%. So, you know, there are going to be places that are lower than us, some that are higher, but that just gives you an idea of what the numbers are. Okay. Any questions? I said it last year and I'll say it again. Stillwater is not that much better than the rest of the state. Those numbers are out of line again for Stillwater. Well, they are what they are. Right. So. I mean, they hit a really big home run. Yeah. Okay, now, the other issue is state testing that I wanted to address is, is if you've been reading the newspaper, you know that last week the state writing tests were released and there's been a lot of discussion, probably more so in social media than there has been necessarily in the state media. But uh, what we saw in Ponca City was we saw that we had a significant decrease in the number of our students who were proficient on the state writing test. As we checked across the state, we found that story was the same all across Oklahoma. That, uh, that the remediation, or not remediation, but the number of students that were proficient, the percentage of students proficient declined across the state. Um, obviously when that happens, the uh, curriculum specialists across the state get together and they start to have discussions about why is this happening? What might the reasons be? Uh, we don't know for sure what the reasons are. Uh, what we believe happened is that once again, uh, the rubric that we thought was going to be used to score the test was different than what McGraw-Hill used to score the fifth grade test. The other thing that we noticed is that uh, students get stored, I think, in five areas, is it, Barbara? So, and you can score anywhere from a one to a four within those five areas. Each area is weighted, and then they produce a score that you're given. Uh, one thing that we noticed that was different than years in the past is we saw, con we, we saw where maybe if a student got a two point, got a two in, in, a, in grammar, he got a two in every other category. Or maybe he got a two in grammar and a 1.5 in, uh, I don't remember now what the categories are, language usage. In the past, what you would see is maybe a student scored a two here, they got a 3.5 here, they got a one over here, and they got a four someplace else. But what we saw across the board were consistencies of scores, um, which we thought was odd. As we talked to districts across the state, we saw the same thing, that, that scores were almost uniform all the way across on every student. Uh, the, uh, as we looked at this, we, we have an, about, uh, I think we 40% of our students who were not proficient scored a 35, a 36 would, make, make, would be a score that would give you a proficient rating. So we had lots of students that were just right at the bubble. Uh, Terry Vogel brought some of the, her uh, fifth grade teachers in last week to uh, look at the test. We, now, we have the test. We have the students answered, and, and I haven't talked to Terry today. I don't know what those what what they saw as a result of that. Here's what we know: uh, we could ask that some tests be rescored, but the cost to do that is $125 a test. Um, that's a significant expenditure of district money uh, for you know something. That at the end of the day. Uh, do we want our proficiency numbers to be higher? Yes. Do we think that the scores our students received are reflective of their ability to write? No. Um, I, I kind of look at it as another way that uh, CBT, the testing company, um, has not, in my opinion, done the job they're hired to do. Uh, but do we want to spend any district money to do that? And, and I don't think at the end of the day, uh, is it really worth the expenditure to do that? And my answer is no. Uh, I don't. I don't think that that what we I'd we'd like to have higher proficiency numbers. Uh, you know, we feel confident in, in uh, how our kids what they do in writing and what we've taught them to do, and and uh, so you have to question what's the validity and reliability of the test, and we don't think the test. Is very reliable and and so um, 
we don't see a lot of reason to spend district resources to prove that when we already think that's true. Has anybody gone back to the State Department questioning CBTs? There have been. I know that I know that Barbara had a conversation um, last week about our concerns about test scores. I know the other uh, other districts have contacted them. Um, ask, we would like for the State Department to rescore the test is what we'd like to see happen or do it at no expense to districts. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. You know, they, the, their uh, relationship with CB McCraw Hill has, is going to end. They've already made that clear. They're not going to renew the contract with them. So you wonder what reason do they have to cooperate in a rescoring. Um, so we just think the best thing to do is just let it lie and, and try to be better and be better in the future. Uh, I mean, I think it's just, a, did I hear something if somebody's, okay. Barbara, do you have anything you want to add? You might come up to the microphone so they can hear you. We scheduled professional development specifically for writing with a reach coach from the State Department of Education. Our teachers felt like that was quality training. They took what they uh, gathered from that training and, and um, implemented that in their classrooms. And what they saw, uh, the eighth grade uh, teachers that looked at the test, what they saw was those kids that, that are their best writers, some of those students were unsatisfactory. Some of those students that were marginal writers were the ones that passed their, their test. But with the elementary schools, about 25% of each elementary site had kids that scored at 35 and 36 is proficient. So again, that's, that's a high number per elementary site that, ha that happens. So that was just, those are just some things that we noticed. And again, the training, our teachers felt like was quality training, but um, that's why we really think that there's So we had the State something. Department come out and train us, and we followed the training they gave us, and you see where our scores are. Mm -hmm. And probably the site that worked the hardest on reading this year uh, and I'm not going to give their name publicly, but but uh, it actually had actually had after school sessions for students to come in and practice writing. I mean, they really went above and beyond what we typically do preparing for the writing test, and they had our lowest scores. So it was almost like the harder you work, the better you prepare, the lower your scores were. So and they were our second highest score last. They were last our second year. highest score last year, and this year they were our lowest score. So there's not any reason, you know. I mean, you know, we talk about looking at data. When we look at the data. It doesn't make sense to us. Um, and again, you know, what you would think you would do is, well, let's just rescore the test. But again, at 125 bucks a test, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not something you just do on a whim. Well, there'd be no guarantee to be scored any difference. No, no. And, and, uh, and it's even to the, we've even looked into who, so who scores the test? And I think that was pretty interesting the other day, somebody, uh, pulled up the advertisement McGraw Hill sent out looking for test scorers, and it's basically uh, they were looking for college students, and they paid them eleven dollars an hour to score test. You know, uh, I just that would be a pretty a tedious job for eleven dollars an hour to sit there and read all those tests and score them. So, uh, well, you gave everybody two yeah, they're not professional test ones. scores. <laughs> I think they they took about I think I got like ten hours of training or something like that and and uh, so uh, anyway so that's where we are. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, so again, just because everybody else in the state is experiencing the same thing doesn't mean that's what we want to have happen. Doesn't make it right, but it does give us some comfort to know that that. There seems to be some consistency, and that consistency is people's scores have dropped. Um, and uh, so we're disappointed, but we'll continue to work at it. We'll eventually, we'll figure out. You know, it really, it really it puts you, it's one of those things that, that you find yourself doing because of all the emphasis we put on assessment. You know, we haven't had a discussion yet about, uh, inside this office, about what do we want fifth grade writing to look at look like what do what do what do what do we want do we want to teach 
five trait writing or seven trait, whatever it is, um, our whole discussion has been what are we going to do to be better on the test? And uh, there's a part of me that wants to rebel against that and say, I don't, that's not what's important. What's important is, is that we know that we're teaching students to express themselves effectively when they write. And that's really all that matters. But at the same time, you have this statewide test and you don't, you know, want to score worse than your peers do on the statewide test. And it is kind of an example of the testing, that, the pressure that testing puts on different parts of the curriculum to make you conform to those tests, whether or not you really believe it's in the best interest of students or not. And we really haven't even had that discussion. We've not sat down and looked at these and goes, well, is this, you know, is this really what we want for kids? But there's no financial penalties. No, there's not. Scores. It's, it's just, just an embarrassment. Pride. You know, it's just about pride. And uh, sometimes pride will get the best of you. So, all right, okay. that's all I have. Next item is 4.0, the consent calendar. Uh, Robin, Mr. Can we return to item 1.3, please? Did I miss something? Roll call for this meeting. We had a roll call for the last one, but not this You're one. right. I did miss 1.3. Jan. Probably ought to call the roll. Mr. Clark. Here. Dr. Kincaid. Here. Mr. Neeson. Here. Mr. Riley. Here. This is true. The thing that's not on this agenda that we did not know that I would have talked about here was the governor's veto of 3399 or her signing of 3399 uh, which is the common core bill that repeals common core in Oklahoma we don't know what we're going to do obviously we'll wait for the state department to send us out some guidance on what they want us to do as far as standards are concerned so it's all up in the air I would be very surprised if we get anything from the state department before the primary I mean I think that's really what everybody I mean even though the State Department is not tied to the state superintendent's reelection, that's where the state superintendent's mind is right now, and I'm sure they're waiting for some direction from her before they move forward. So I think it'll be after June 24th before we know any, in a direction we're going to go. And depending upon the results of that primary, that may also affect whatever direction we get from the current state superintendent. So anyway, we're just all in limbo right now. Okay, item 4.1 is the agenda with commentary. 4.2 is the minutes of the previous meeting. 4.3 is the agreements under 10,000, which we've looked at, and they're mainly just renewals of existing contracts. 4.4 is for out-of-state travel. 4.5 is primarily the principals being assigned as the activity fund custodians. And 4.6 is designating the administrators for the federal programs. Does anybody have any question on these? If not, I'll just ask for one motion to approve four point in its entirety. So moved. Have Second. a motion from Don. Second. Second from Marvin. Roll call, please. Call for the vote. Dr. Kincaid. Aye. Mr. Newsom. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. This is true. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Motion carries. 5.0. Uh, consideration of and vote to approve or not approve the following items looks like a through n were all probably covered in the finance committee meeting most people have reviewed those if everybody has any questions of Brenda she'd be happy to answer them if not I'd ask for a motion to approve 5.1 approve do I have a motion do I have a second Second. Motion from Judy. Second from Don. Call for the vote. Jan. Mr. Newsom. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Troop. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Dr. Kincaid. Aye. Motion carries. 5.2. Consideration of and vote to approve or not approve the following people for appointments by the board for the following positions for 2014-2015 school year. Uh, Brenda Story as Deputy Minutes Clerk, District Treasurer and District Purchasing Agent. Jan Miller as Assistant Treasurer and Minutes Clerk. Mary Ladd as Deputy Minutes Clerk. And Leanne Allen as District Encumbrance Clerk. It's my understanding these are all existing positions. It's just a renewal for the next school year. The only change is, is that Jan has been the Deputy Minutes Clerk and she's now going to be our Minutes Clerk. Okay. Her, okay. She and Brenda are switching positions. Okay. I'll ask for a motion to approve 5.2. Move approval of 5.2. I'll second. 
Motion made by Marvin, approved by, or seconded by Judy. Call for the vote. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Troop? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Dr. Kincaid? Aye. Mr. Neeson? Aye. Motion carries. 5.3, consideration of and vote to approve or not approve the district budget for FY15 at 5.30 this evening. We had a special meeting to discuss the budget for next year. I think Brenda did a very good job explaining it to us. We asked questions. She answered them. Does anybody have any other questions? No, of, for approval of 5 budget? Okay, we have a motion from Don to approve 5.3. One second. And a second from Dr. Kincaid. Call for the vote. Mrs. Troop? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Dr. Kincaid? Aye. Mr. Reason? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. 5.4, consideration of and vote to approve or not approve agreement with Pinnacle Business Systems for network switch upgrade. Is Jason here? No, I did not get a hold of Jason to ask him about this one. It looks like it is upgrading the network wide area switches to go to the 10 gig capacity. Right. And I think this was the one that we we're gonna to try to do to, with AT&T and that fell through. Well, this, this is the switches to do that. Okay. What we were going to do, we, we had an, early in the year, we had an item on here to actually buy some fiber and have it installed that would be 10 gig fiber. Okay. And instead, we worked out a deal with the city where they're going to be able to, they're going to provide us with that same amount of fiber through their existing system. So it saved us a significant amount of money. Yeah, it was like 70 or 80,000 right. dollars. The switches, we have to, even even right. with the other project, we still would have needed to buy switches to make everything work. So this is just the purchase of the switches to go with to get us the so city we can so we can fiber. run that bigger pipe. Okay, and this is to go to I think all the different schools. We'll touch all the buildings. Anybody have any questions on it? It asks for a motion to approve five point four. We make a motion to approve five point four. Motion by Judy. Second. Second. Second by Marvin. Call for the vote. Mr. Clark? Aye. Dr. Kincaid? Aye. Mr. Neeson? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Troop? Aye. Motion carries. 5.5. Consideration and vote to approve or not approve change order number one to the East Grand Administration Building. I think this is some minor changes that net out about $6,000 worth on a few minor little details that were missed on the original project. I think the property committee talked about these is in agreement yes, we did. to it. I'd like a motion to approve. Motion from Don to approve Second. five five. Second from Dr. Kincaid. Call for the vote. Dr. Kincaid? Aye. Mr. Neeson? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Truth? Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Motion carries. Five point six consideration of vote and vote to approve or not approve accepting subcontractor bids for the Lincoln Elementary re roof and HVAC project. I believe Brad and Stephanie Austin are going to talk to us about this one. Yeah. Uh, the bids came in, uh, and the proper committee looked at these over and, and brought Stephanie with Ridgecock Construction to kind of explain, you know, where we, where we went with those. Uh, they came in under budget. We were very happy with, uh, with the way that they came in. Uh, the public's budget for this particular project was $2.325 million. So with the fee, Troy Lewis's fees and so forth, we're at about $2.4 about $160,000 more than the public's budget. We've got some monies from other bond issues to cover this thing, but these will include alternates, um, and which we, Stephanie will be glad to explain here in, in, in just a moment. And then we can uh, uh, discuss any questions you might have. So Stephanie, you wanna come up and... Good evening. When we originally started working on Lincoln, through some preliminary budgeting based off of Washington Elementary School, which we just completed in January, um, it became very apparent that the, not only the, the scope of the project in physical size, but also dollar size was going to be very large. Um, there was really no economies of scale um, when you re-roof a 70,000 square foot building versus a 36,000 square foot building, which is what Lincoln was. We are upgrading the entire HVAC system at Washington or at, at Lincoln, excuse me, and also re-roofing the entire facility. 
So through our budgeting process, we had to make some cuts for the project itself, uh, the addition. We decided that was not going to be financially um, applicable at this time to do that. Um, there were some other things that we wanted to make sure that we covered, and we, Brett said earlier, some alternates that we had. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had all the needs of the, the school to, for it to function properly uh, met with what we would call base bid, that is reworking the entire school and redoing and upgrading the HVAC system, um, which would require upgrades to the electrical and some gas and, and um, plumbing areas for the roof itself. That was basically what we wanted to accomplish for the base bid and then have items that the school board, the school can vote to add on later if the money allowed. But we wanted to make sure that if nothing else, we could re-roof the project and upgrade the HVAC. And that's what we've done. We had projected um, at our 90%, 95% budget um, for the base bid at $2.2 million. And on bid day, the base bid came in at $1.8 million. So we were very pleased with that. Um, some of the bids came in substantially lower than what we had anticipated. A couple of them are local companies that we are very comfortable with. One of them, the roofing company, it has done, I think, two or three of the schools here in the district. Um, and we're extremely comfortable with all of, all of the bids that came in. There were four alternates that we chose to pull out separately to make sure that um, the school, if they wanted to, they could opt to do these. One of them was to upgrade um, the HVAC system to have all of the units be alike. There are some rooms in Lincoln that have a, a problem with humidity. Um, in the base bid, we chose to pull out those classrooms and identify those individually and have a, um, I don't want to say nicer because that's not really what I mean, but address those rooms individually to, to take care of the humidity issues. And we thought, okay, well, after we get all these bids in, let's see what the, the option will be to do that with all of the classrooms. Um, another option is to, um, the first alternate one and two are basically um, heating and air upgrades for the entire facility, not just the rooms that have humidity problems. Alternate number three was to re-roof the gym. Um, I believe, is that the original PVC the, on, the, on the gym, is the original membrane roofing? Um, alternate number three was to redo that and all the flashing. And then alternate number four is to install an underground drainage system to where all of the water off of the roof would be piped underground and be taken out away from the school to the very north end of the property into a, a retention pond where it would be held and then let out slowly into the city storm sewer system. Um, originally, the detention for this particular project was um, very under budgeted for lack of a, a better word. Um, the city was not involved and once we start drawing plans, we have to submit those to the city so they can see what we're doing, make sure we're complying with codes and the city engineering department. Um, because of the amount of water that was going to be coming off of this facility, um, they required us to provide a, a stormwater prevention plan to uh, detain all of that water and that and required us to have a, an underground drainage facility as it is if we are going to have one, there is always the option of it coming straight off of the roof and dumping out onto the ground. Um, but if we were going to have an underground drainage system, the one that is designed was actually designed by the city engineering department. And it's a big one. So let me see. We don't have to do anything drainage wise, but if we do a retention system, we have to meet the city's code. There are some requirements in the base bid that we'll have to do some concrete work directing the, the water in and out and around. Um, it doesn't have to be. It will be very, um, there'll be a lot of water that is dumped out on that ground. Um, a lot of um, ponding in those currently, I believe the south west corner of that front parking lot is a detention area. Um, that is where all the water is held right now to be let out slowly. And what will happen is that front parking lot will just fill, fill up. Um, some of the water is taken to the east, to west, I believe. Right now there is a, a drainage area. Is that correct? In, yeah, in the, the west parking lot? parking lot? Is all 
and then goes around um, for west. It's it does not have to be done. It's not a requirement. It will be a very very nice feature for that school to not have the large amounts of water that are in that area. I, I know, I don't know if any of you have been to that school right now after it rains, the water does currently dump out on, on the ground. The roof in and of itself at its highest point will be about 25 feet above the building right now um, and it'll be dumping a lot more water at a faster pace off of the roof than it does right now. It sounded like to me the parking lot basically would be underwater people wouldn't be able to get out of their cars or even drive in it probably if it's still dr it drained. Yeah, until it drained out. It'd be our lucky to do it every time it as the kids is all there getting question, out of school. Question for Don and Dr. Kincaid. As the property committee, I assume these were all discussed. Do you all recommend all four alternate alternates yes. from the property committee? And, 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 what, and, and just something to remember is that with the upgrade in the air conditioning that we're going to do, uh, yes, we're doing it because of the humidity problems in some classrooms, but we actually are part of a program mm -hmm. that we're going to receive some rebates on this. So we're going to, so these units, you know, we've, the last few years we've been putting units on that are more energy efficient. These will be the highest energy efficient units we've ever put on, so we're going to receive some savings just because they're more energy efficient, but we're also got an additional level of savings because we committed to do this. And we, we actually met with OMPA several times and there was a lot of correspondence back and forth between Brett and Lewis Associates and our, ourselves and some of our subcontractors and figuring out exactly what that savings will be. There's a little bit of an upcharge up front from, for the actual equipment. Um, however, there is a substantial savings to the school from OMPA in addition to savings in the efficiencies in your utility bills each month as well. So we think that's a winning proposition. Um, that necessitates some electrical upgrades because the, these units, it takes a different set of different amounts of power to run those. So, uh, so we, you know, again, we're going to get all this with the upgrades for what, what did you say, Brett? A hundred and thousand more than our, more than our original bid. So, so we've, you know, we've, we've got the money to do this, and, and I'd recommend that you take this with the alternates. Yeah, I think it's also important to notice that all the various bid packs were either the only bidder or the low bidder. Right. By policy, we did that. Right. E any other questions for Brett or Stephanie? Uh, is there going to be a pitch for us? Mm -hmm. oh, it will be very similar. There will be a, a little area on the, the cafeteria and the gymnasium will not be. Um, but all of the other areas on the roof will be very similar to all the other schools, Washington, Liberty, uh, Trout, Woodlands, will be just like that. It doesn't seem that Lincoln's been well, in business, what, 18, 19 years now, something like that? 20 years, be 95 is when it opened. Wow. I, I, don't, I have to disagree. It, it opened in 97. That's when we moved in because I was there five years, and I retired in 2000. Well, Judy, you know better than the rest of us. Okay. It's because it says 95 on the plaque. Or we've got a, whatever we keep around here for record shows that we did it in 95. Probably when the groundbreaking was. Maybe we broke ground in 95. You might have. We might have broke ground in 95. It yeah. took that long. Any other questions? It wasn't quite done when we moved in. Yeah. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve 5.6, including alternatives 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'd move that. Okay, motion from David, a second? I'll second. From Judy, call for the vote. Jan? Mr. Newsom? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Troop? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Dr. Kincaid? Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. 5.7, consideration of vote to approve or not approve the following contracts agreements. Uh, a is agreement with Crystal Creek. Limited Liability Corporation for Asbestos Removal at Woodlands Elementary. It was the low bid. B is agreement with Anderson Carpet for carpeting the high school median center. It again was the low bid. C is an agreement with Evans and Associates for new parking area at Washington Elementary. It was the only bid. D is a ratification of financial advisory agreement with Stephen H. McDonald and Associates. That's our bonding agent company that's a, a yearly agreement we have with them. 
E is renewal of agreement with Wilson Dotson Associates to provide an annual audit of financial affairs and transactions. That's an annual agreement we have with them. Uh, F's renewal of agreement with Northwest Evaluations for software license. I think that's an agreement, just a renewal for the standard map testing, if I right. believe. Uh, G's agreement with Gary Bracken, attorney, for his engagement. That's at the same annual fee that we paid last year to Mr. Bracken. H is a renewal of workers' compensation insurance. Uh, that's our premium. It's a very large amount, but it didn't significantly go up. Six hundred plus thousand dollars. That's the annual premium premium for workers' comp. I is agreement with Loftus and Wetzel to provide certain insurance services to the district. It's recommended by Dr. Pennington. I believe they have been our longtime insurance carrier for all the various type of insurances listed. Does anyone have any questions about any of these? If not, I'd ask for a motion to approve 5.7 in its entirety. I want to back okay. up on one thing. Loftus and Wetzel is kind of the agency that oversees this for us. Right. We actually are getting a new property insurance carrier. Is that correct, That's Brett? Correct. Lofton Wetzel has been our agent in regards to uh, you know shopping around and so forth and getting our insurances. Trident Insurance was our uh, carrier before and also Chubb with our property. Chubb uh, came in higher this year. Trident left the state of Oklahoma, so we shopped with two other ones, two other companies. Uh, one turned in a bid, which is OSIG, which is Oklahoma School Insurance Group, which does schools all over this all over the state. So that's the one that we chose, and they gave us a package for all of the insurance, and um, uh, in, in, a, in one big package. So that's who we ended up going with. But Loftus and Wetzel will still be our agent that we work through. How was their bid compared to last year? We're about twenty thousand dollars cheaper, cheaper this year. We got some additional riders. Yeah, there was some additional riders. Uh, with the state of Oklahoma issuing a, an alert for earthquakes, uh, I'd ask to find out if there was any uh, incentive. Was it, was it affordable to get earthquake insurance? He didn't think there was. Uh, I also asked about sexual misconduct, um, and usually that's a rider that they have to add for an additional charge. Both of those were included as a basic price on this thing without any additional charges. So we're going to have additional insurance. Uh, entertain a motion for 5.7. Yeah. A through I. Second. Motion from Don, second from Dr. Kincaid. Call for the vote. <clears throat> Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Troop. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Dr. Kincaid. Aye. Mr. Nusen. Aye. Motion carries. Do we need to have an executive session? I don't unless you guys need one. No. Does anybody want an executive session? If not, we'll skip item 5.8. That means we'll skip 5.9 and we'll skip 5.10. 5.11, vote to approve or not approve recommendations for termination, reassignment, resignation, and employment of personnel. This listed on pages 230 through 249. Any questions of Dr. Pennington on those? Shelly, give us an update. How many sp teaching positions do we have open at 650 on Monday? Eight. We had eight. How many do we have open this morning when we started? Ten, but we got one resignation and we got three today. So. So, so added three and lost one. We just seem to stay between that six to eight number. So when are we going to get down to zero? I'm, I'm working really hard on that. <laughs> Hopefully people will quit resigning. Well, are they just quitting or are they going for it? Okay. So I'll entertain a motion for, to approve 5.11. Move approval. Motion from Marvin, second from Don. Call for the vote, Jan. Mr. Clark. Aye. Dr. Kincaid. Aye. Mr. Newsom. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. True. Aye. Motion carries. Anybody have any new business? No new business, sir. Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. From Judy. Second. Yes, second. From Dr. Kincaid. All in favor say aye. Uh, Post same sign. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Good job.